AZ900 is your gateway to enter the Microsoft Azure cloud and level up your career with the most sought after skills in cloud industry. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In this part 28 today, we are going to focus questions based on Azure SLA. And needless to say, this is a very important section. Quite some questions have appeared in the recent exam from this section. And before I move ahead, for all the viewers who are joining the Tech Blackboard family for the first time today, please note that we have already covered 520 questions on AZ900. All the questions are very latest from the 2023 series. So please do watch all the previous parts, enhance your passing score and subscribe to the Tech Blackboard channel for more such career oriented videos. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. So here comes the first question for today. Question number 521. It says that you can improve composite SLA by adding redundant service to your application. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. So let's do few more questions on Azure SLA and then I will give you Microsoft documentation where you can not only validate the answer but also do some self-study. So here comes question number 522. It says SLA is a formal agreement between Microsoft and a customer. Which of the following aspects are outlined by SLA agreement? Your options are scalability, elasticity, fault tolerance or availability. And most definitely the correct answer is option D, availability. And here comes a very interesting and important question on composite SLA. It says that you have an Azure application that uses services shown in the following table. So here you can see that we are given with two services, Azure Virtual Machine and Azure SQL Database. And for each of these services, we are also given with SLA, which is 99.9 .9 for Azure Virtual Machine and 99.99 .99 for Azure SQL Database. Further, the question says that how should you calculate the composite SLA for the application? And here you can see that we are given with four options, basically four formulas to calculate SLA and one of these is correct answer. And let me reveal the correct answer, which is option C. And friends, it's very easy to calculate the composite SLA. Basically, you can simply multiply the individual SLA for each service and then you get your own composite SLA and you should multiply this SLA here with 100 to convert this SLA into percentage. So this is the relevant Microsoft documentation that you can use to understand the composite SLA. So this is the section where you can understand it. It is here and it says composite SLAs involve multiple services supporting an application, each with differing level of availability. For example, consider an app service web app that writes to Azure SQL database. At times of publication, these Azure services have the following SLAs. Here you can see that we are given with SLAs of Azure app service web apps which is 99.95% and then for SQL database it is 99.99%. So how to calculate the composite SLA for these two services? Well they have simply multiplied the SLAs of individual services and then they have composite SLA. And this is exactly the similar way that I have shown in question number 523. Moving on with the question number 524, it says adding more dependent services to your application improve composite SLA, yes or no? And the correct answer is no. So friends, please understand when you are adding dependent services to your application, what does it mean? It is like adding one more field point to your application. So how do you improve composite SLA for your application? Well, let's find out in the next question. Question number 525, it says adding redundant services to your application improve composite SLA, yes or no? And most definitely this is the correct statement. So adding redundant service, what does that mean? Basically, you're adding a mechanism or you can say that you're adding failover services, for example, and in this documentation, the example is given. You can see that we have web app. We also have SQL database and then we also have a queue services. So basically what's happening here is that in normal conditions, web app will write the content or the data to SQL database. However, in case the SQL database is failed or not reachable, in that case, the web app can still continue and write the content or the data to the queue services. And this is a perfect example of adding redundant services. And that's how you can also improve your composite SLA. Moving on with the question number 526, it says the service configuration can impact on the SLA that Microsoft provides, yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. So many services provides extra configuration options like availability zones for Azure virtual machines that increases the overall SLA. 
And now we have question number 527. It says, what's the SLA of Azure Maps in terms of guaranteed uptime? Your options are 99%, 99.9% or the last one is 99.99% and the correct answer is option B, 99.9%. Coming up next is question number 528. It says Azure services in public preview are subject to service level agreement or SLA. Yes or no and the correct answer is no. So this is a very very important point for you to understand my friends that public previews are excluded from SLA and in some cases no support is offered. Let's take the next question question number 529 that says companies can increase service level agreement guaranteed uptime by adding Azure resources to multiple regions. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. Of course, service level agreement uptime is increased usually to 99.95% when the resources are deployed across multiple regions. And now we have question number 530 that says the service level agreement guaranteed uptime for paid Azure services is at least 99.9%. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. So please understand that SLA vary based on the resource type and the location distribution of the resource. However, the minimum uptime of all the Azure services is 99.9%. Coming up next is question number 531. It says companies can increase service level agreement guaranteed uptime by purchasing multiple subscriptions. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because the number of subscriptions is unrelated to the uptime SLA. So it doesn't matter whether you have one single subscription or you have multiple subscription. Coming up next is question number 532. It says adding a third virtual machine reduces composite SLA. How can the companies offset this reduction? Your options are increase the size of each virtual machine. The second option is deploy extra instances of the same virtual machine across different availability zone in the same Azure region. Thirdly, we are given with do nothing, use Azure load balancer increases the SLA for virtual machines. And the correct approach to deal with this business case is option B, deploy extra instances of same virtual machines across different availability zones in the same Azure region. And why this is so? Because even if one availability zone is affected, your virtual machine instance in the other availability zone should not be affected and your application would still be working just fine. And with that, we have come to the question number 533. It says a standard support plan is included in an Azure free account. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement. That's why no, because an Azure free account comes with the basic support plan and not with the standard support plan. Question number 534 says that which service level agreement is provided for Azure services in the public preview? Your options are each service defines its own SLA. Second one is SLA will be 99% and the third option says the SLA will be 1% less than the general availability SLA and the fourth one is the SLA will be 99.95% and the correct answer for this question is option A each service defines its own SLA and here comes question number 535 it says a premier support plan can only be purchased by the companies that have an enterprise agreement or EA yes or no and this one my friends is a correct statement question number 536 says all the Azure services in private preview must be accessed by using a separate Azure portal yes or no and most surely this is not a correct statement that's why no just to give you more information, services in private preview can be viewed in the regular Azure portal. However, you need to be signed up for the feature in the private preview before you can view it. And also understand my friends that access to the private preview features is only by invitation. And now we have question number 537 that says Azure services in public preview can be used in production environment. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. But, but, but there is a warning with this. And that is that you can use services in public preview in production environment. However, you must understand, you must be aware that the services may have faults and it's not subjected to SLA and may be withdrawn without any notice. So my personal suggestion is that you should never use services in public preview 
always use the services which are in general availability state. So I hope you understood that though you can use public preview services in production environment, there is no stoppage for that, but you should not. Why? Because public preview services are not backed up with the SLAs. So in case any public preview service breaks down in the production environment, Microsoft has no liability and you cannot hold Microsoft responsible for it. So always be aware whether the service is in public preview or in generally available. And with that caution in mind, let's move to the next question. Question number 538 says that if your company uses Azure free account, you will be only able to use a subset of Azure services. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because Azure free account gives you 12 month access to the most popular services. And you also get a credit of $200 absolutely free to use any Azure services for up to 30 days. And now comes question number 539. It says that you can create up to 10 Azure free accounts by using the same Microsoft account. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And that essentially means that you can create only one free Azure account per Microsoft account. And this brings us to the question number 540 that says all the Azure free accounts expire after a specific period. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. So as I just said, all the free accounts expire after 12 months. And friends, if you want the free PDF file containing all the questions and the answers from the part 27 and the part 28, which is this one, then you need to tell me the correct answers for the question number 503, 512 and 516, which are from the part 27. And then question number 527, 532 and 540, which are from this part 28. And you can send in your answers to our email ID that is connect us at the rate the techblackboard.com and please always remember to mention the part number while sending your answers. So I hope you liked today's session where we took a lot of questions on Azure SLA, which is one of the most important sections. You get a lot of questions in AZ900 exam from this section. So please go through the questions once again, understand the answers and also read through the documentation that I gave. But in case there is still something that you don't understand, please write to me at our email ID or in the comment section. And that was all for today, my friends. If you gain some value from this video, please do not forget to like the video. And in case you are new here today, please subscribe to the channel as we bring a lot of quality content on Azure certifications. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.